you are gonna get butterflies if you've not done this before. I'm not gonna start recording like that. It's like a sandwich, all right? You've already got the chicken slices in there, the mayonnaise, the ketchup, the chili sauce, the hot, whatever it is that you put. I can't even reach my arms out. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more freestyle. So I can't believe I'm actually stood in my new studio. I hope you enjoyed my last video. So for those of you asking about how to set up your Scarlett interface, don't worry, I'm gonna be showing you today. I'm just gonna talk you through how to set it up and then how to open up Logic and create an audio recording, all right? I don't produce yet, so eventually I'll build up to producing, but for now, I'm just focusing on vocals because I'm a rapper, I'm a singer, whatever, and we're gonna do this, all right? By the way, for those that were saying that I've got a big space, like it's not a big space at all, I can't even reach my arms out. I've just made sure I've positioned it in a corner of a room where, you know, I can still manoeuvre and function and record, but it's not that big. It's literally one, two, three, like literally, this is it. You know, it's very tiny and it's doable, that's the point. So for this session, I'm literally just going to talk to you about how to connect your Scarlet your speakers, your headphones, your microphone, so that you know exactly where to put in the leads. And then we're gonna go on to Logic, we're gonna open it up and I'm gonna show you how to make sure that your interface is actually going through to Logic so that it picks it up and you can record good quality. I'm gonna give you little tips as well that I've been learning as I'm going along to ensure that you have a nice recording. So now I'm gonna talk you through how to connect your actual Focusrite interface i'm going to start off with the headphones like i said with the scarlet 2i2 third generation you get the headphones the mic and the lead okay as well as this interface so the headphones it has a particular position for you to plug it into when you look at your audio interface here there's actual headphone signs so you just connect it in there easy peasy done okay then we want to connect our mic if you have a look this is the lead that you get with the Scarlett interface, okay? This red lead here is what connects your mic to the interface. So have a look at the top there. It just goes underneath your mic, like so. You wanna make sure that the logo of the actual mic is facing forward, facing you, so that you're recording the right way around, okay? And here, it just goes straight into input one. You could, if you wanted to, if you're like someone that's more musical than me and can play a guitar, you could record another input at the same time. That's, that's the benefit of these Scarlet interfaces. You could record two inputs at once, all right? And I'm gonna talk you through a bit more when we open up Logic about the importance of these two as well. So when you plug this in, you'll see this red come on. There's something beside it called air. When you're actually recording, you should click air because it gives it a nice kind of, I can't explain it, like an airy, crispier feeling, a brightness to your vocal when you record. If you could, you could have it off if you wanted, but it is nice when it's on. This is really important, okay? So when you're actually recording and you're testing your levels of the mic, you are gonna need to make sure that this level right here is not peaking. And the way you do that is, and I'll show you in a second when I turn on my interface, is you you have to set it kind of, I would say, so if I bring it down, about just over halfway, because if it flashes red or orange, it means that it's gonna be destroyed, it's not gonna be a nice recording. You need to make sure that the color you see that appears on here is a green, and I'll show you in a moment. You need to make sure as well that this green light here is on, and you wanna have it on stereo. Stereo is the two overlapped circles. Um, it just makes sure that it's coming out through the stereo and the mic, okay? It's really, really important. You'll see when you record that you just need to make sure you've got it on the green one with the two overlapping circles. It looks like the Olympics. When you're actually recording, you're going to have to click this sign here. It helps encourage the mic to get louder. So it's 48 volts and you need to make sure before you record, you click it. Okay, so once you've got your mic in, you've got your headphones in, you've had a look at your 48 volts, that's on, nothing like that. You don't need it on right now until you start recording. Mm. You then need to make sure you connect your speakers because as soon as you plug the actual audio interface in, your laptop speakers will not be working. So don't be worried, you will not hear it through the laptop. You will only be able to hear it 
through your headphones which you could mix in headphones if you can't afford speakers yet um obviously you wouldn't get this amazing amazing recorder because you want to hear it out sometimes but if not get yourself some desktop speakers doesn't matter as long as you can listen out and you will need to connect it here there is an area for it it's right left at the back of the scotland so your left speaker will go in the left side and the right speaker will go in the right side i had to order two of these leads from amazon um because they didn't come with the speakers weird enough um and each color goes into a certain speaker so the black one goes into the right speaker and i have to make sure it connects from here to the um, right speaker and then the left one is red and it goes into the left speaker so you have to make sure that that you connect them accordingly you don't put the right one into the left one it's just gonna mess everything up all right it's very simple like i said all you need to do is connect your mic connect your headphones connect your speakers the last thing you need to connect is the actual audio interface into the mac so you do get this lead with the pack that you get okay so as well as the mic lead you also get this lead for the audio interface you put the smaller side at the back you'll have a look at it and then the usb side goes into your mac as i've said i don't actually have um a usb in my mac okay because i've got a macbook pro so i've had to buy this adapter and i just connect it in there and there we go how do you know this turns on because the colors come on how do you know it's off there's no colors how do we know it turns on the colors come on beautiful look at the purple everything like that so now that we've connected our interface connected our speakers we've connected our lovely mic we are good to go so just some little tips that i've been learning as i'm going along to make sure that you have that you know decent recording at home and you don't have these little things in your ear that when you listen back it's like oh what is that sound and you can't figure it out well one thing that i've learned is that 80 percent of the actual overall mix is determined by your actual recording so 20 percent only 20 percent is to do with the mix so if you've got a really good recording to start with you might not really need to do that much mixing you know it's only just additional stuff it's like a sandwich all right you've already got the chicken slices in there you've already got whatever if you eat ham i don't eat pork whatever it is you've got in there and then the mix is literally like the mayonnaise, the ketchup, the chili sauce, the hot sauce, whatever it is that you put. But you've got the main thing inside. And that main thing is making sure you have your quality recording. So how do we do that? Starts off with, like I said, make sure you've got this shield here at the back. Get yourself some panels, like I said in the last one. And then your pop filter. Some people, the mistake they do is actually put the pop filter right against the mic. And that's not good at all. It ruins the recording. So you need to make sure the pop filter is about five inches away from the mic and it's covered. The height level, if you can have a look at how I am, I'm just slightly going down. It's like kind of the same height as my lips. You don't really want to wrap upwards because you'll be straining your vocals and you don't want to wrap down too much. So you want to try to get it leveled. So we're gonna go ahead now and have a look at how you open up Logic for the first time. You are gonna get butterflies if you've not done this before and how to set it up and how to really get started and get recording. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up Logic. I've already had Logic opened, but if you wanna open up a new page of Logic, you go Command N. I'm gonna open up an empty project okay so I'll just let that load I'm gonna click audio because obviously I'm recording vocals if you were doing like software instrument or drama or whatever you were you'd select the right appropriate one for me I'm gonna do audio you want to make sure you've got input monitoring ticked as well as record enable okay and you can click the number of tracks that you want. I'm just gonna click one right now. And then it's gonna take you to this page here. What you need to do when you get to the page is load a few more tracks for yourself, okay? First thing you're gonna do is go into Logic Pro at the top of the toolbar, go into preferences, scroll down a bit into 
audio. We need to get the audio right, remember? So, where it says output device and input device, you need to make sure you've got your Scartlet or whatever interface it is you're using, you've got it in there. So, we don't want the system set in or the built-in input. We want to make sure our audio interface is coming through both. So, I've got the Scartlet here and the Scarlet here in the input and the output. Now, this buffer size is very important. When you're recording, you want to make sure you've got your buffer size to the lowest possible. Now, my mic, I record with 128. You can record with 64 and 32 dep depending on the mic, but I just find my mic reads 128 nicely. This buffer size is important because it determines the amount of latency you're going to get. This kind of weird, these horrible sounds that you get when you're actually recording. The smaller the buffer size, the less latency you get, okay? Because it processes, makes sense, small information quicker. I'm going to show you how to put a track in, okay? So I'm just going to go into my Apple and you can just drag it from your library in there by just selecting the file and dragging it into your logic. So you just go into your music, go into any, go into your finder, find whatever it is you want. You just put it in, okay? You slide it in to one of the tracks. One of the biggest mistakes an artist could do or who's just starting out is to record without checking the tempo of the beat. It's very important you check the tempo of the beat before you record and you process it through the BPM counter in Logic. Otherwise, when you record it, everything's gonna be out of time. When you go back to mix it, for instance, and open it in another laptop. BPM just means the tempo of the beat, beats per minute, okay? We need to set it on the actual Logic. It's very easy. Here where it says audio effects, you're gonna click the arrow below, scroll down to meter in, Click on BPM counter mono, okay? Make sure you've got the selected track, okay? So what I mean by that is make sure you just click the track where the beat is because that's what it's going to process the information through. And we're going to go ahead and play the beat and you'll see that these numbers will come up. Okay, so we've got it at 87. It's the number that stays constant. Sometimes it will fluctuate, but it might say, look, 86.9, whatever, but I'm gonna stick to 87 because it seems more of it is happening. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off. After I get that number, you need to go up at the top of Logic on the toolbar, it says something called Tempo. You double click that number and you write, you type in, 87 and press enter now that we've set the tempo we need to go ahead and create our tracks to record our vocals in so we've put our beat in very easy we've made sure our audio is set at the right buffer size so that we can record now we're going to need to record our vocals you click the next track okay here where it says audio three for me you need to make sure you've got the i on as well as the r the i allows you to hear back the B yourself as you're recording, and the record enables you to actually record. You need to have the track selected that you're gonna record into. We need to make sure, like I said, it says input one. Your mic levels here in the fader should really be about three quarters of the way up. Remember, before you actually record, the interface requires you to click the 48 volts. This phantom drive needs to be on for your mic to be able to read what you're going through. So, very easy, we've made sure we've got the buffer size set between 32 to 128. We've got our actual 48 volts clicked on. We've made sure that our mic, when we're going through it and testing it, isn't peaking, it's not going orange or red, it has to be green. So you have to test out your level the first time. If you wanted a particular section of the beat to record over, the, the function for it is you could either click this button here and you would drag it 
to where you want. So some people like to start with the hook, the middle of the verse or whatever it is, and you just press there. So wherever this is set on this side is where the recording will start. In order for you to actually record, you click the R button. And as you can see, it automatically starts recording where that yellow loop part begins, okay? And then if you want to stop recording, you just press the space button. Here it goes, yeah. A little bit of me on a beat. Everyone likes it because it's me, I'm laughter. Yeah, a little bit more freestyle. Now we've got 48 volts. You can see the signal coming through with no fault. I'm not gonna start recording like that. Now that we've recorded, you've seen it came through. The red was like, it was healthy as it was coming in. You could see the signals coming in. That's it for today. It's a bit of a, you know, technological conversation we've had here, but some people were asking me about how to set up your Scarlett 2 i2 third generation. I've had to go and watch videos. So I hope you found my video, you know, quite helpful, but I am learning and these little tips I will be sharing. If you have any tips, feel free to let me know um, because yeah, I'm literally just trying to better myself in this little bedroom and just get the best recording. And I'm just trying to help other people that want to start it out. If I can do it, you can definitely do it, right? So today, we spoke about how to connect the audio interface. We connected it. We checked all the levels. We made sure the pop filter was correct. And we opened up Logit. We made sure the audio was set correct. I showed you how to input the actual beat. I showed you how to start recording vocals, R, I, and how to save it. I gave you little tips. Remember guys, it's 80% based on your recording and 20% is the mix. Make sure you subscribe to the one and only laughter and make sure you click the links below and choose whatever it is that you want to purchase for your own home studio thank you very much 